Good good morning students. This is the lecture of object oriented programming using C++. We have already started our first chapter. That is principles of object oriented programming. In the last session we have seen the basic concept of object oriented programming. So these are the basic concept of object oriented program here object classes data abstraction and encapsulation inheritance polymorphism dynamic binding and message passing so we have already discussed these basic concept of object oriented programming today in this lecture we will see the object oriented languages application of object oriented programming here object oriented languages depending upon the features of object oriented programming support they can classified into the two categories like object based programming languages and object oriented programming languages the classification is done by considering the features of object oriented programming support First, object-based programming languages. Here, object-based programming language is the style of programming that primarily supports encapsulation and usage of object. These languages support encapsulation and object usage without supporting important feature of object-oriented languages like polymorphism, inheritance, and message passing. That is, message-based communication. here in object based programming it has some major features like data encapsulation data hiding access mechanism automatic initialization and clear up of objects operator overloading here languages that support programming with objects are said to be the object based programming language but they do not support inheritance and dynamic binding as well as polymorphism okay then what is object oriented programming languages these languages support all the object based programming features along with two additional features that is inheritance and dynamic binding which is not supported by the object based programming languages so object oriented programming is the programming approach where all the features present in a object based programming language with two new features that is inheritance and dynamic binding so object oriented programming can therefore be characterized by the following statement that is object based features okay plus inheritance and dynamic binding this is the object oriented programming language see the main difference between object based up programming language and object oriented programming language is that object oriented programming language supports all the object based up programming features and in the object based up programming language they do not support the inheritance polymorphism and dynamic binding here we can see the overview in the object based languages object based language support the usage of object and encapsulation what is encapsulation wrapping up data and functions into a single entity called as a class they do not support inheritance or polymorphism or both what is inheritance creating new class from existing one means deriving new class from the base class that is inheritance and polymorphism means same name but different function so these both features of the object oriented programming is not supported by the object based languages next object based language does not support built in objects here object oriented languages use the reference which is used to create a new name for the existing object known as the built in object but object based language not supported this built in object javascript vb are the example of object based languages next is object oriented languages 
object oriented languages support all the features of oops that is object oriented programming including inheritance and polymorphism they support built in objects means when we create one class after that we can create number of object of that class but if you want to create object or new object so we need the reference and that is called as a built in object c++ reference allows us to create a new name for a existing object means it reference is used to give the new name for the already existed object c sharp java vb.net are the example of object oriented languages these two are the classification of object oriented languages depending upon the usage of object now we will see the another classification here depending on the extent to which they support object oriented concept the object oriented languages are classified into following categories means here object oriented concept there are some object oriented concept and depending on the how much support given to the object oriented concept depending on that it is classified into three categories like pure languages multi paradigm languages and hybrid languages first we will see the pure languages languages which support and also enforce all the object oriented concept are called as a pure object oriented languages in the object oriented languages or in pure object oriented languages everything from the character to punctuation mark to the modules is treated as an object means pure languages means what it uses all the features of the object oriented language the small talk if l ruby are the example of pure object oriented languages what is pure pure means only object oriented concepts in this language only object oriented concept are used next is the multi paradigm languages multi means main here the languages that support many programming paradigms there are different programming paradigms like uh, procedure programming generic programming structural programming like that the language which support many programming paradigms one of which is the object oriented paradigm are called as a multi paradigm object oriented languages means here there are different paradigms like procedure generic but from that one of the paradigm is object oriented language then it is known as a multi paradigm language the c++ is the example of multi paradigm object oriented language and last one is a hybrid language hybrid means mix up so languages that support some of the object oriented concept are called a hybrid languages okay in this some of the features of object oriented programming is used the java python c sharp are the example of hybrid object oriented language now here we completed our object oriented language concept here we saw that there are two categories of object oriented languages one is a object based programming language and second is a object oriented programming language object based programming language what it support important features of the object oriented programming but it not support to the polymorphism inheritance and message passing in object oriented programming language it support all the object oriented features including polymorphism inheritance and message passing next depending on the extent of which the object oriented concept are supported it is classified or categorized into three points that is pure languages multi paradigm languages and hybrid languages in pure languages only object oriented programming concepts are used multi paradigm languages here different paradigms are used now different concept present in a paradigms are used one of them is a 
object oriented paradigm and hybrid language is the what it support not all but some of the features of the object oriented language okay our next point is a application of object oriented programming okay applications of object oriented programming applications of op are beginning to gain importance in many areas the most popular application of object oriented programming has been in the area of user interface design that is gui such as window hundreds of windows system have been developed using the object oriented programming technique real business system are often much more complex and contain many more objects with complicated attributes and method object oriented programming is useful in this type of application because it can simplify a complex program here we know that object in object oriented programming everything is in the form of object and classes and also it is used to write program which is complex or which are related to the real world problems so the application of object oriented programming is morely focused on the real business system that is real world problems also it used in the area of user interface design okay here are the some applications of op that is a real time system uh, just uh, in the previous lecture we have seen the example of railway ticket booking that is online railway ticket booking also we can take the example of banking system also the student manage uh, student database management system library management system okay these are the real time system simulation and modeling object oriented databases scripting like hypertext hypermedia ai that is artificial intelligence and expert systems neural networks and parallel programming decision support and office automation systems C cim cam cad systems okay these are the application of object oriented program just we saw the real time system examples of real time system like online railway ticket booking etc next simulation and modeling means what simulation is the technique which is the representation of real world entities in the form of computer program it is a simulation okay a uh, simula 67 small talk are the two object oriented languages which are designed for the making simulations next is a user interface design like this object oriented programming is popular application of the area for the designing graphical user interfaces such as window uh, we all know the windows operating system it has very user friendly user interface okay means uh, any new person can also start the computer and it can um, familiar with the operating system within a few minutes so this type of graphical user interface is provided by the object oriented programming also object uh, oriented databases means in these days object oriented programming concept have also been introduced in the database system for what to develop a new database management system called as a object database okay these database store the data directly in the form of object you know that in rdbms uh, the data is stored in the form of records cells and records but in object database the data is directly stored in the form of object uh, also this uh, object oriented programming language is used to develop the computer games and virtual reality in, com in computer games also there is a uh, what um, graphical user interface is used okay in the scripting means that hypertext and hypermedia in the recent years object oriented programming is used for developing the html xhtml and xml document for the internet 
python ruby and java are the languages based on the object oriented principles which are used for the scripting means uh, you know that the website website are websites are created by using the different web development languages and the mostly um, python xml html these are the languages which is used to develop the web application and it is also provided by the object oriented program okay this is all about the application of object oriented program beyond that uh, sorry beyond this there are number of application of object oriented program now we will start our third sub point that is introduction to c++ first we will see the learning outcomes of this session that is uh, of that uh, of this 1.3 sub point after this completion of this sub point you will be able to explain structure of the c++ means how to write c++ program and write simple c++ program you know that uh, there is some structure for the writing c program same like that here is a structure we will discuss the structure of the c++ program see the content c versus c++ means we are going to see the difference between c language and c++ language structure of c++ program and simple c++ program first we will start with the introduction of c++ means what is the evolution of the c++ yeah introduction to c++ okay who is the developer of c language yes dennis rich and c++ is an object oriented programming language developed by the bajar strostrup okay first he wanted to combine the features of both similar 67 and c c here the definition to develop the c++ he combined the some features or all the features of c some features of the similar 67 first that language is called as a that is c++ is previously previously called as the c with classes but in the 1980 it is got approved by the ncc in 1983 and it is called as a c++ okay he wanted to combine the features of both similar 67 and c and he developed a powerful language that support object oriented programming with features of c means it also contain the features of c and also it support the features of op the thought of c++ came from the c increment operator you know that increment operator which is used to add one in the operand so it is a next version of we can call as a c++ is the next version of the c or also called as a c with classes means the c++ here yeah, c++ is an extension of c and a superset of c what is superset of c means it has the all features present in a c it also support the features which are present in a c as well as it has the some new features so it become the superset of c in the c++ various features are sorry various features were de derived from the similar 67 and also algol 68 so we know that the for developing complicated applications object oriented languages such as c++ is used because it is very convenient and easy to write a program in the c++ so where it is used the c++ could be considered a superset of c language 
with extension and improvement with the object oriented features included in it c++ runs on a variety of platforms means this c++ you can run c++ program on to the windows operating system mac os unix and also in sorry also on linux operating system so this is introduction of c++ the main thing is it is developed by the bajaj startup it is a combination of simula 67 algol 68 and c previously it is called as a c with classes in 1983 it named as a c++ it is the extension of c or superset of c okay and c++ which is mostly used to develop the real world problems and complex problems okay now this is a diagram of evolution of c++ okay next is the features of c++ here we can see one diagram these are the features of c++ first we will list it object oriented simple extensible mid level structured rich library memory management recursion faster compiler based pointers and portable now we will see all these features one by one first we will see the object oriented so c++ has the important feature that is it is a object oriented language so in the c++ everything is in the form of classes and objects so by using that object we can develop program to solve the real world program uh, in object oriented languages there are number of features like polymorphism inheritance class object data heading message passing these all features are present in the c++ language okay so first feature of the c++ is a it is a object oriented language second is a simple simple means what that is you are familiar with c language okay so you don't need to worry about the c++ and you don't want to uh, so you don't face any problem while working with the c++ because uh, the syntax of the c++ are almost same in the c language so you already know the c language and syntax present in the c language so you you will easily uh, write the program in the c++ also c++ provide the structured approach means in this large programs are divided divided into number of modules Uh, like object and class so we can write programs very easily in the c++ language uh, when we start to learn any new language we want to understand it into the depth and the simple context of the c++ gives an appeal to the programmers who are interested to learn the new programming language so why it is simple because the syntax present in a c++ are somewhat same to the c language it uses the modular programming or structured programming means large program is divided into the small entities so writing complex program program or application is easy into the c++ so c++ is the simple language next is extensible as it is a object oriented programming the program is divided into the modules okay so adding of any new object or any new model is easy into the c++ language so extensible means it can easily add new features into the c++ next one is a mid level so why it is mid level because c++ has the features of the low level programming as well as the high level program so it is called as a mid level language language
नेक्स्ट इज अ स्ट्रक्चर सो द कोड इज मॉड्यूलर विद द हेल्प ऑफ फंक्शन क्लासेस एंड ऑब्जेक्ट मॉड्यूलर कोड इज इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड मॉडिफाई सो दिस इज द फीचर ऑफ द सी प्लस प्लस स्ट्रक्चर मीन्स वॉट द कोड इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ फंक्शन क्लास एंड ऑब्जेक्ट एंड मॉड्यूलर कोड मीन्स द लार्ज प्रोग्राम इज डिवाइडेड इन टू द स्मॉल प्रोग्राम और स्मॉल फंक्शन और स्मॉल मॉड्यूल्स एंड राइटिंग दैट स्मॉल मॉड्यूल्स इज इजी एज कंपेयर टू द राइटिंग लार्ज प्रोग्राम सो स्ट्रक्चर्ड इज द अनदर फीचर ऑफ द सी प्लस प्लस नेक्स्ट इज रिच लाइब्ररी मीन्स इन द सी प्लस प्लस डेवलपर्स हैव एक्सेस टू लॉट ऑफ इनबिल्ड functions provided by the c++ language this saves the time as well as makes development fast okay so rich library means there are number of inbuilt function which are present in the header file now we will see now we will see here different header files and the purpose of these that is io stream it contain the c++ standard input output functions io manipulate that is it contains stream manipulators that format stream of data like these these are the different header files and it contains the inbuilt function so it has the rich library like c math it contains the math library function c standard library c time f stream memory okay algorithm iterator so c++ has the rich set of the library next is a memory management okay c++ supports the pointers use of pointers what is pointer pointer is a variable we store the address of another variable so this pointer allows us to allocate the memory dynamically okay so we may use constructor also destructor while working with the class and object in the c++ memory management means what in the c++ language we can easily allocate the new memory location and also we can delete the memory by using the new and delete operator okay uh, by using uh, constructor and destructor also we can create the uh, or allocate the memory as well as remove the memory space or free the memory space next is a recursion we already studied this recursion into the c language what is recursion means when any function call itself then it is called as a recursion in suppose uh, there is one function that is a void main function and if we call that main function into the self means main function then it is called as a recursion we will see one example see here how does recursion work here is a function void recurs here is a function integer main so in the main function we can call the recurs it is a just function calling when we call recurs function from main function the program flow transfer here it is a regular function calling but in the void recurs function if we call the same function recurs then it is called a recursive call or it is called as a recursion any function can call same function then it is called as a recursion function call itself in the simple word if function call itself then it is called as a recursion next one is a faster or speed so we know that the, the compilation and executing time is less in the c++ so it is a faster language after writing the 
C program. What we do? First we compile that program and then execute that program. Same in the C++. First we have to write the program. After that we can uh, compile that program and then we can run the program. The execution and compilation speed is fast. So the C++ is the faster. Next one is the compile base. What is mean by compile base? Ra? In the C++ language without compilation we cannot execute the C++ program must means the compilation is must after writing the program first we have to compile that program the com what will compiler do it will compile your program it will find out the errors in your program and it will convert that high level program into the mid level program so it is a compiler based means without compilation we cannot execute the C++ programs. Next one is a pointer. As we know pointer is a special type of variable which store the address of the another variable. By using pointers we can easily allocate and deallocate the memory. So pointer is one of the feature of the C++. Next one is a portable. What is mean by portable? Machine independent. Okay. For that we will see one example or image. See here. What is portable means? Portability refers to using the same code. Using the same code in varied environment okay. C++ program can be executed in different computer machine with a little bit of no change means what uh, take one example suppose uh, we write CPP program into the Linux operating system and um, for some reason we have to switch our operating system from Linux to Windows so after writing cpp program first it will compile see here first.cpp it is a source file just like a uh, first.c is the source file of c program like that first.cpp is the file of or source file of cpp program after compilation it will create first.object file and that object file can be executed on the variety of operating system so after writing the program into the windows operating system we can switch any other operating system like windows mac linux that program directly executed without our very uh, little bit change into the program so it is a portable means machine independent so these are the features of c++ program Okay. See here, first is the object oriented. C++ is the object oriented programming language. So it has all, it supports all the features which are present in object oriented programming like inheritance, polymorphism, classes, object, message passing, dynamic binding, etc. It is a simple because the uh, syntax of the C++ are same uh, with the C language and we already studied the C language so there is no any problem to write the C++ program also it is a extensible means we can easily add any new module into the C++ program next is a mid level mid level means what it is the uh, we can say the combination of low level language and high level language or we can take some features from the low level languages and some from the high level languages next is a structure means everything in the c++ language is divided into the modular so writing the program in in the form of modules is very easy uh, next is a rich library rich library means uh, in uh, while writing the c++ program uh, developer can use the inbuilt function which are present in the library like ivo stream it will provide the input output function 
these are the inbuilt function so c++ has the rich library next is the memory management in the c++ language we are going to use the constructor and destructors which are used to create and delete the memory space so memory management is done into the c++ next is the recursion means what when any function call itself then it is called as a recursion and this feature is present in the c++ next is a faster due to the less compilation and less execution time the c++ language is the faster one compiler based means without doing the compilation we cannot execute the c++ program next pointer c++ language supports the pointers next is a or last is a pole table means after writing the c++ program on one machine we can easily execute that program with the little bit or no change on the another machine these are the 12 features of the c++ language okay now we will start the structure of c++ program the structure of c++ program is divided into four different section like header file class declaration section member function definition section and main section main function section here is the diagram include statement means header file statement class declaration class function definition that is member function definition and main program first we will start the header file section okay this section contains various header files same like a c program first we have to include the files this hash is the pre processor directive which include the io stream dot header file and that header file contains the inbuilt function declaration and function definition so if we want to access any inbuilt function we have to include the header file here we can include various header files in our program using this section that is hash include io stream dot h this header file contains the input output function header file contains declaration and definition of various built in functions as well as object in order to use this function or object we need to include particular header file in our program and this is the first line of a program header file means what header files are files which contains the declaration and definition of inbuilt function in our program if we want to use the inbuilt function we have to include the header files and this is the first section header file section next is a class declare declaration section this section contains declaration of class just like a variable before going to use variable we have to declare the variable same like if we want to use the object of a class we have to first declare the class so first we can declare class and then declare the data members that is variables and member function that is function inside that class here one example here class name is a demo so to declare class we have to use the class keyword and name of the class after that opening curly braces in that integer ab this is the declaration of what variables and it is declared into the class so it is called as a data members the variables which are declared into the class are called as the data members of that class next public is a public is a what access specifier so we will see it into the second chapter public private protected these are the access specifier and what is the use of that access specifier we will see so here void input and void output these are the two functions which are 
declared into the class demo so these are called as a member functions okay and closing curly bracket this is the declaration of class we can also inherit one class from another existing class in this section so after declaring this class we can create another class and this is known as the inheritance see here again class is a keyword demo is a class name after that open curly bracket integer a and b a and b are the variables having integer data type and it is declared into the class demo so it is called as the data members of class next void input and void and output are the function which are declared into the class demo so these are called as the member function of this demo okay now <coughs> you are understand the you are understand the class declaration section next the member function definition section means you know that in a c language after declaring a function we have to write definition of that functions definition means actual operation which are performed into the function are written down in the function member function definition section in the previous example void input and void output are the member function these are just declaration of a section oh, sorry declaration of a function but this is the member function definition section this section is optional okay we can uh, define the member function into the class also means see again here is a only declaration of a member function void input we can define this input function here also within the class okay otherwise we can write the definition of function outside the class also no because we can define member function inside the class or outside the class we can define the function into the class or out of the class if all the member functions are defined inside the class then there is a no need of this section suppose uh, we can declare also and define the function into the class then there is a no need of this section this section is used only when if we want to define member function outside the class mean uh, suppose we write the program like class demo after that uh, integer a b then uh, void input semicolon void output semicolon this is the declaration and now if we want to define that function outside the class then we use this section this section contains definition of the member function that are declared inside the class now for example here yeah, this section contains definition of member function that are declared inside the class here yeah, why demo and input is the member function of class demo so cs syntax why class name scope resolution operator this is a scope resolution operator and this is the member function input and here is the definition of input function that is enter value for a and enter value for b this is the input okay this is the member function definition section now last one is a main function section as we know the c programming so main function is the function from where execution is start in this section we can create an object of the class and then using this object we can call various function defined inside the class as per our requirement means what see here void main is the function and from here our execution will be started demo is a class name and d1 is the object of that demo class first in the void main we have to write the object declaration that is a class name and object name now d1 is the object of class demo and as we know the which are the member function of the demo class input and output these are the member function of class demo so if we want to call these member function we have to write the object name first that is d1 dot input d1 dot output means by using this object here we are calling the 
member functions d1 dot input d1 dot output we can also compare the structure of c++ program with client server application means what in the client server application client send request to the server and server give the response or provide service to the client yeah these are the four section of the c++ program see here again header file section where we include the header files header files uh, contains the inbuilt function which are developer going to use class declaration section it contains the declaration of class and within that class we have to declare the member data member that is a variables and also member functions third one is a member function definition section it is a optional section where we have to write the definition of that function if we define the function into the class or inside the class there is a no need of this third section and last one is a main function section in that we have to create a object of a class and by using that object we can call the member functions of that class okay this is the structure of c++ program now we will see one simple program using c++ see here hash include io stream integer main open bracket see out hello world return zero closing curly bracket now see this program line by line the c++ language defines several headers which contain information that is either necessary or useful to our program for this program the header io string is needed okay hash is the preprocessor which include the io string into the program this is a what header section next the next line okay here two operators divided operators this is this is a single comment in the c++ program okay the next line that is a double slash main is where program executing execution begin the main is where program execution begins this is the comment comment is just for user information the comment are never goes under the execution okay is a single line comment available in c++ single line comment begin with double slash and stop at the end of the line so there is no need to give the double slash at the end of the line this is the single line comment next the line int main this is is the main function where program execution begins from here our program execution will begin the next is a c out uh, in c programming there is a function that is a printf which is used to display the uh, display the strings or display the output in the c uh, cpp or c++ c out is the output function now after writing this function hello world is printed on the output screen so the next line c out this is my first program sorry the next line c out this is my first c program call the message this is my first c++ program to be displayed on the screen because c out is the output function in the c++ program the next line is a return zero it terminates main function and cause it is it to return the value zero to the calling process here uh, no need of writing integer main uh, in case you write the integer main we have to write the return zero because it returns the zero value means closing of the main function here we can write the void main also okay so see again this is a header line here io stream is included in this program integer main from here our program execution will start see out is the output function 
and return 0 is the closing of the main function. Okay, now we will write program by using the turbo C++ which is the editor for C++ writing the C++ program. See here, now you are familiar, you already have familiar with this. This is the what? Editor for writing the C or C++ program. Here we can create file by using file new. Here we can write the program. Sorry, write the program name demo dot. Here the extension of the C++ file is a cpp. And then enter. Here our file is a demo dot cpp. Okay, where we can write the our program. Okay, at the practical time, we will see how to write program on the Turbo C++ environment. Okay, now the last point of this sub point is a difference between C language and C++ language. Here is the difference. See here, these are the basic difference point of the C and CPP language. First, programming type. As we know, C is the procedure oriented language and C++ is a object oriented programming language. Next is approach. C language is a top down approach means first what main function is written after that we can write the modules or sub modules or functions and in C++ it follow the bottom up approach means first the lower level functions are designed and after that main function will be designed. Next is a file extension in C language dot C is the file extension and in CPP language dot CPP is the file extension. Next program division in C programming language a big program code is divided into smaller pieces known as the function and in the C++ the program is divided into the object and classes. Next is a structure. Structure in C not provide the feature of function declaration. Here no need of declaring the function but in C++ it provide the feature of declaring functions as a member function of the structure means in the class we have to declare a member function but in C there is no need to declare a functions next standard input operation input output operation in C already you know that scanf and printf are the input output function but in C++ C in and C out are the input standard input output operations data security in C language the data is not secured because it is a procedure oriented language and it is mostly focused on the procedure not on the data but in C++ data is secure so it can't be accessed by the external functions in the next chapter we, uh, we can or we are going to see the access specifier by using this we can easily understand how data is secure into the C++. These are the basic difference. Next difference are compatibility with the other languages. C is not compatible with another languages but C++ is compatible with the other generic programming languages. Pointer. C supports only pointers but C++ support both pointers and reference. By using reference we can give new name to the existed object next variable in C the variable should not be defined at the beginning of the program ok we can uh, in the C language we can define the variable at the beginning of the program but in C++ it allows us to declare variable anywhere in the function as you remember in the C language after writing the void main function first we have to declare the variables ok but not uh, this is not in the C++ point of focus C focuses on the step or procedure because it is a procedure oriented approach but in C++ it focuses on the object and so uh, though it is a focus on object it is used in the real world problems. Function overloading this concept is not present in C but it is present in the C++. Data types <coughs> sorry 
C language does not allows you to declare string or boolean but in C++ we can use the string which is the collection of correct characters and boolean data type that is a true or false type of data type okay next is a driven by it is a function function driven language it is a object driven language means in a C language um, the program is executed function and in the uh, C++ by using the object we can execute the program here again focus focus is not on the data but on the process and in the C++ focus is on the data instead of the procedure encapsulation this uh, C language does not support encapsulation means uh, wrapping of data and function in the single entity but in the C++ data and functions are encapsulated together as an object and as a class information hiding there is no information hiding concept in C but it is present in the C++ data types in C++ it support built in data types and it support built in as well as user defined data types that is a class global variables it allows multiple declaration of global variables in C language but multiple declaration of global variables are not allowed in a C++ now concept of mapping the mapping between data and function is very complicated because it is not encapsulated but in C++ the mapping of data and function is not so complicated because it is encapsulated in the form of class and object inheritance there is no concept of inheritance in a C language but C++ it support the inheritance <coughs> next default header file C uses stdio.h header file in C++ it uses the iostream.header file for the input output function next one is a keyword in the C language we know that there are 32 keywords but in the CPP there are 52 keywords are present last one is a polymorphism poly means many morph means form so this polymorphism concept is not possible in the C language the concept of polymorphism is used in a C++ like um, function overloading and operator overloading that we will see in the polymorphism chapter okay so these are the basic difference between C language and C++ you can remember the some easy difference like um, approach C top down approach C++ bottom up approach programming type like C is a procedure oriented C++ is a object oriented okay uh, next file extension is dot C and in C++ programming file extension is dot CPP here um, point of focus that is a C language focuses on the procedure not on data but C++ focuses on the data that is object not on the procedure again encapsulation information hiding inheritance polymorphism these four features are present in the C++ language but not on the not in the C language so here is the basic difference between C and C++ language so see here what what was the learning outcome at the end of this section you will be able to explain structure of C++ and write simple C++ program this is the end of this session ok and now you can explain the structure of C++ now I will going to revise the all content of this session first we have seen the object oriented languages then application of object oriented programming 
After that, we have seen introduction to C++. Features of C++. Structure of C++ program. And one simple program to print hello world in C++ and basic difference between C language and C++ language. Okay, we will start the fourth sub point in the next lecture.